In this video, I want to get into the decision-making process of whether FileMaker Cloud is right for you and your organization. Now, the following sequence of decisions are things that I have prioritized based upon my experience with the FileMaker platform. And you may choose to prioritize items in here in a different order, but largely this should be the decision-making sequence that you consider when thinking about moving to the FileMaker Cloud. Now in this video, I assume that you already understand what FileMaker Cloud is, and that is it is an option for having your custom app hosted up on Amazon's AWS infrastructure. So we're not going to cover so much what FM Cloud is, we're going to discuss a logical decision-making sequence to determine if it's right for us. So first off, are you using a FileMaker custom app right now? And are you sharing that custom app with the team? Now if the answer is yes to these questions, you definitely need to be hosting it on FileMaker Server or FileMaker Cloud. Now the next question that's very important to us is, are you already hosting it with FileMaker Server and is that server running well for you? So the first question really is, are you using a custom app in FileMaker and are you hosting it already with FileMaker Server? And if that server is working great, then there's no immediate need to jump over and start using FileMaker Cloud. If you have something that's working great for you, don't mess with it. It's one of those kind of rules that I live by. Now if you have a mission critical custom FileMaker application and it's not yet being hosted on FileMaker Server, then we should continue with the discussion. The next item to consider is the availability of FileMaker Cloud in your geographical region. Initially when FileMaker Cloud ships, the availability will be limited to Amazon AWS data centers that are in North America. And as time goes on, the availability of FileMaker Cloud at other Amazon data centers around the globe will change. So you need to check availability of FileMaker Cloud at an Amazon data center that's closest to you. Now without me getting into a bunch of technical details, you always want to leverage FileMaker Cloud at the closest possible Amazon data center because this gives you the highest level of performance. You want to try to minimize the distance between your users and the FileMaker Cloud server. Now the next thing to consider is do you need support for Windows Active Directory? Now if you don't know what Active Directory is, then you don't need support for it. If you're a Windows shop and you're using Active Directory, understand that FileMaker Cloud does not currently support Active Directory authentication for accessing a custom FileMaker app. So if you require Active Directory support, you want to use the regular FileMaker server on-premise because it does support Active Directory. Next question. Do you need PHP access to your FileMaker solution? Now FileMaker calls this custom web publishing, but we're talking about PHP pages that actually can talk to FileMaker. Some FileMaker customers actually use publicly accessible web pages to access their FileMaker solution to either load data into it or to display data. And if you need this, that is not currently supported with the FileMaker Cloud. So in that situation, you want to use the on-premise FileMaker server. What about server-side plugins? If you think that you're going to need a server-side plugin or you're currently leveraging a server-side plugin on an older installation of FileMaker Server, you need to confirm that the server-side plugins that you need have been made available for FileMaker Cloud by the plugin vendor. So there are third-party vendors that make plugins and FileMaker Cloud does support plugins, but they have to be converted and adapted for use with FileMaker Cloud. You cannot take plugins for Mac and Windows and install them on FileMaker Cloud. They just won't work. If the plugin is not available for FileMaker Cloud, then once again you're going to be looking at an on-premise FileMaker server installation. The next decision point. Does your current FileMaker solution leverage ESS with access to MySQL, Microsoft SQL, or Oracle? If you don't know what this is, then you probably are not using it. If the answer is yes, then understand that FileMaker Cloud supports MySQL, Microsoft SQL, and Oracle so long as those data sources are also somewhere on AWS. If you're trying to leverage DB2 or Postgres, those data sources are not currently supported in the FileMaker Cloud. Let's talk about PSOS and SASE. 
We're talking about perform script on server and server assisted script execution. These are almost the identical same thing. Sassy is a scheduled script execution that runs on the server that is not available on the FileMaker Cloud. PSOS, which is activated by a client user, is available on both platforms. Now the last thing to consider is your FileMaker solution been optimized for deployment on a wide area network or on the internet. Now if you're familiar with FM Starting Point, that's a free CRM system for the FileMaker platform that's been tuned for use in an internet environment or a wide area network environment. So that works great with FileMaker Cloud or FileMaker Server. If you have an old school FileMaker solution that you haven't tested from a remote server, then before you commit yourself to going down the road with FileMaker Cloud, you're going to want to set up a test condition to make sure that your FileMaker database works great over a wide area network connection, like an internet connection. If you have questions about that, feel free to email me at support at RC Consulting and we can help you with that test. So if you manage to get all the way down this list and not disqualify yourself from using FileMaker Cloud, we're now at a spot where you can legitimately choose between FileMaker on-premise server and FileMaker Cloud. Running on-premise FileMaker server located physically in your office, that situation provides maximum performance for the users in the office. If you have a distributed workforce where some users are in the office and some users are at home or in a different city or state or country, then having that server up on an Amazon data center will give you overall best performance for the entire group of users. Now if you compare the cost of actually procuring your own hardware versus running your own virtual server up on Amazon's data center, you're going to find that Amazon has a very competitive offering with prices that you generally cannot beat. Now we have other videos that talk about pricing and how to even save on that pricing, but understand at this point in our diagram, you actually have a legitimate choice between FileMaker on-premise server and FileMaker Cloud. Now keep in mind, you can take FileMaker on-premise server and install that up on Amazon. You have to do it manually. You have to set it up on a Windows-based virtual server which is actually more expensive than the FileMaker Cloud offering because FileMaker Cloud leverages Linux servers which are cheaper than Windows servers. So on-premise server can be loaded up on a virtual server up in Amazon's data center. My company has been doing that for many years. That being said, the FileMaker Cloud is radically simpler to install and to deploy and to manage on the whole. So if you've got to this point in the decision-making process, you might want to seriously consider leveraging FileMaker Cloud. For more information about leveraging FileMaker Cloud, I recommend that you talk to your local FileMaker consultant, preferably one that's certified and with a platinum rating, and talk to them about your hosting and server needs. If you don't have a high-quality local FileMaker developer, feel free to email my team at support at rcconsulting.com. Thank <laughs> you.